Hey folks, Dennis Duenas here, Montana Llama Guides, where we provide mountain adventures with our pack llamas. We're putting together a how-to series on how to pack llamas. It's gonna be a four-part series on the basics to handling. We'll move into saddling and loading panniers on a llama, and we'll go as far as even going to trailering, trailhead etiquette, trail etiquette, camp etiquette, you know, stock retention, you know, what we do in the mountains so you guys get a clear idea. This is great for the do-it-yourselfer that's just getting into llamas that wants to learn more. We have a lot of rental clients that want to get ahead of the game when, before they show up for our pack school. So this is a great uh, tutorial for you, so stay with us. Make sure you subscribe, and let's go ahead and get started with part one of How to Pack Llamas. So we're gonna start with wrangling a llama and to get ready to halter and lead and do some brushing. And so to do that, uh, what I'm gonna start off with is using a wand. A wand is something that I can use an extension of my arm to kind of corral the llama into a particular area. And then alongside that, I will have um, a halter and a lead rope. So this halter is meant for a llama. It is uh, got a nose band, tail, goes around the head and buckles back in. Attached to the halter is a lead rope. And my particular system that I enjoy uh, to use is going to be um, just a bull snap on a six to five foot lead rope with a carabiner at the end. So we'll go ahead and uh, work with this and catch a llama and show you guys how we wrangle. Again, we take them from a large area to a smaller area. Now we've ran them into our paddock here. And now as we have a bunch of them, they go through the routine, they get it. But now we want to catch one. Um, so we want to focus our energy on that one llama, you know, and kind of ignore the rest of them. But they're going to move as a herd. And so we end up just kind of want to separating them, you know, as we go. So I'm going to start off with, uh, with this guy here. His name is Theo. He's the one with the white neck and gray body, a little taller guy there. So as I come in, I'm gonna cut him, and my, my goal is I wanna be able to push him to this side here so that he goes uh, on the other side of this green panel. It's a good catch pen area. So let's go this way, Theo. So I just kinda of move him along. And with this water here, they don't really wanna step in this too much, so this is making it somewhat easy. But, Okay, so now I've cut three of them off and I'm just gonna take a minute for them to think about it, think about what's going on. This guy's a little, you can see he's kinda of like, oh my gosh, I'm caught. So we're just gonna let them kinda of think about it for a second. It's good training for everybody. But now I wanna catch Theo himself. And so I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna cut these two off. Come on, let's go this side. And so we just wanna ignore this guy and push him over. And now I'm gonna back up and I'm gonna let Theo think about it. Cause now he's like, whoa, the rest of them left, what's going on? So I'm gonna to come to Theo. I'm gonna get rid of my wand now. And so now here's a good example of working with them. You know, he can go this direction if he goes forward. He can kind of go back. But if, um, so if I step just a little bit this way, that really gives him a, a, a position to go forward. So as I come, I like to have my hands out and I wave them. Uh, as an indicator saying, hey, llama, here I come. A lot of times you don't want to come in all moving around and shaking, they, they kind of get a little nervous by it. So we're gonna come, here we come, Theo. And I always like to, to make sure we use the tail of the lead rope for me and my, my way is like, you know, I don't want to go and grab him, hold on to him. That ends up being very, you know, kind of aggressive and they have a bubble in their space. So I'll take this around his neck and uh, bring it up high up on his chin. Uh, to put a halter on, so I'll demonstrate that now. Here we come, Theo. Yep, good boy. So now we know he's in submission. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the tail, and I wanna keep my nose pointed away from his head because I don't want him to flick back. You know, they can smack back, and I've heard people breaking cheekbones and noses, especially with horses. Um, but for him, I'm gonna keep my head pointed around because he's getting a little word. I'm gonna move the lead rope up as high as I can, and I just want to hold on to it. I never really want to pull tightly. I never really want to jerk him. I just want to let him know, hey, I'm here and I'm rocking him. Now I'm going to take the halter and there's an obvious hole there for his nose. And if you present that to him, he'll, he'll want to go in. And it's a, with working with the haltering, 
sometimes it's just a slow process but there he goes <laughs> and on some of these guys they're pretty uh, they're pretty experienced if you're training with the llama and you want to work on this so what I do is just kind of you know you don't want to pull hard I just kind of let him know I'm there and then I'm going to take it off and we're going to try it again so as we halt here here we come oh I know there we go good job Theo so now here I'm going to match my hands because I still want to be in control of his of his of his head here but I don't want to let go of this buckle so I like to match my hands here and then reach around here grab the the tail of the, the altar now make sure when we put this halter on we want to bring it right back behind the ears let's not have it down here that's too low we want to have it up here high and then we'll feed this in about there and we'll thread it back through and now I'll double check that we got what's really important is we want to have enough room in here fingers to get in so the llama can open up his mouth and chew. What we don't want is we don't want this neck nose band to be too large because if that nose band falls down onto the tip of his nose there, it's just like our nose and the uh, cartilage in our nose. If something got pushed on there really hard, we end up panicking. So we really want that, that nose band to be back um, up on the bridge of his nose as much as we can. So that's a good halter because a lot of times when we pull him this way, you can see how much looseness there is there. So now that we have him haltered there, um, Theo is ready to hit the trail. All right, folks. So we just went through haltering uh, your llama, catching and haltering. Now I'm just going to go over some of the equipment that we have on our good llama here, Theo. So we start with this halter. His halter, as we mentioned, um, we want that up high around here, nose band. Make sure that's up uh, uh, more forward and not around the nose. On his lead rope, uh, my system that I like to use is a five to six foot lead rope. It is attaches to the llama on a brass bull snap. This bull snap uh, does not have a trigger. It is a little hard to get into. You actually need to grab the uh, opening here and pull it and then get out. So it's a little hard to get into, and that's kind of actually uh, what I like about it. Uh, nothing really there to catch on. That lead rope is then attached at the end with a carabiner. And with this carabiner, it's not meant for a handle. It is meant to, I'm going to now uh, walk over and demonstrate, we're gonna use the carabiner, and it's gonna go around, uh, say, a, a hitching rail, your trailer, a tree, um, there. So that's one way we use the carabiner. Um, so now Theo is kind of tied off here, but then I also like to, if we're going to work with him, if we're going to saddle too much movement around here or too much um, room for him to move around can kind of cause some problems. So I want to kind of shorten up on him. So I'll bring that either into the bottom of the bull snap or back up to his chin. Kind of a safety thing with the llamas. Um, they are an animal that um, we're going down the trail. Sometimes other dogs will come around, other trail users, uh, wildlife. You know, we've had uh, mountain grouse kind of flush up from the, the sides of the trail and they kind of get spooked, as do I. So one thing that we like to do in safety is just want to keep our hands away from the bull snap here. Uh, any of that metal, we want to stick our fingers in there. If that llama happens to throw its head back, I don't want to get my fingers caught. So make sure we stay away from that there. Uh, likewise, on the other end, on the, with the carabiner, we want to make sure that we do not use it as a handle. Our fingers are going to get caught, so we don't want to use that. Um, and we do not want to clip this to ourselves or anything, or a backpack, because again, if the llama decide to take off, you're going to get jerked and it's unsafe. I'd rather, um, if we want to lead our llama, about uh, 12 inches uh, below his chin is where we'll then encourage him with just a little bit of pressure. Well-trained llamas don't need a lot of pressure. And so I'm going to lead him and make sure that if we are leading him, we're going to encourage him to go in a direction. We want to give him a place to go. It's unfair to, you know, pull him this way saying, come on llama. And then he's like trying to walk over top of you. So always like if we're going um, on a trail or we're going through a creek or we're going over a log, um, we're going to go ahead and lead him over top of that log um, as we come down. But nine times out of ten, when I'm going down the trail, um, I am going to have this lead rope uh, just in my hand like this. And I like to hold closer to the carabiner. So as we go down, 
Theo's just gonna be right behind me, uh, like this here. A little bit of encouragement. And if I decide that the lead rope is too, there's too much uh, rope right now, or if I want the llama to be closer, um, if you want to take up some of the slack, or some people call it choking up, um, the best method for us for safety wise is to actually take over and butterfly your lead rope uh, and grab onto here. That way, if he does jerk his head back, gets spooked or scared, that's just gonna pop right out. What I'd rather not see is please do not wrap your fingers around your rope like this. Um, again, if somebody's walking through in that llama, big llamas, they jerk on that, it's gonna grab my hand and start to twist and really pull on that. But generally, unlike a dog, you know, dogs, can, most people are gonna be right in front of them. Uh, with the llama, we're gonna actually, he's gonna be behind us. So imagine us on a trail, we're going down the trail. The llama should be right behind us uh, for several reasons. One, uh, we wanna reduce our impact on the trail. And two, um, that way we don't have the llama create another trail. And so as we just, we walk, and this is a poor example of a trail, um, but hopefully you guys get the idea um, that we'll walk through here. Theo's just gonna be this distance from me. If I wanted to have less lead, I would just hold this here. Walk down the trail, but again, if I wanna choke up on it, I'm gonna take the butterfly approach and hold the trail lead like this. If I need to stop, you know, Theo's probably gonna stop with me. If I want Theo to turn around, Again, I'm gonna uh, grab his lead rope here, about 12 inches from his chin, and I'm just gonna encourage him to go in a circle. Now we have some water here, so I'm gonna go have him kind of walk through, back through, there we go. You know, their safe zone for the llama is gonna be their neck. They don't like their heads touch, as you can see, don't like that as much. Their neck is a really nice safe zone. Their back is pretty good. And to about the middle of the back, you know, these llamas are really well trained and so they understand the, the back and, and putting on a saddle. But when we start getting around here, see his tail? Doesn't like being touched around there. Doesn't like their feet being touched too much. You can kind of see some are better than others. But this is the safe zone for the llama here. If we start getting into his feet, watch his feet. Yeah, does not like touching the feet. And we'll go ahead and start to brush. And in brushing, I like to use um, these Safari dog brushes. You can get them on Chewy.com. We'll have the link in the description below. And it's just a dog uh, brush. I try to get the biggest ones I can. The most important thing when we start to brush is that from the animal's withers and back, where the saddle will go is most important. But I do like to make a llama look good going down the trail and especially when we're coming out of winter. So I'll go ahead and, I'll go ahead and brush Theo around his neck. For me, this is a time where I can kinda, we start to bond with the llama a little bit, um, kinda get to know its movement, listen to its sounds. Again, I'm just gonna take this here, pull that off. One thing to take, keep in mind is when we have this fleece coming off the llama, we wanna make sure that we keep it kinda contained, especially if we're at a trailhead. Uh, we don't want to leave this just scattered everywhere. Even though it is organic and it is good for bird nesting um, and it's not necessarily considered, it, it, some people may look at it as being as litter. So we'll take this um, and at the trailer, we'll throw this back into your trailer um, so that we put everything back in there. Uh, in a crawl space, I like to kind of keep it inside and contained. I also like to, when I go ahead and brush the llama, I like to go ahead and keep a hand on him, kind of lets him know I'm here. And it's just a methodical process. I start at the top line. You know, you can feel his spine here. I'm gonna start on his top line and kind of brush it halfway through. And now we are coming just out of winter, so they haven't been brushed really much all since last fall. You know, if I'm farther away here, he can really get some wind up and kick me. So I like to be a little bit closer, but a cinch is going to ride through here. So we really do want to make sure that we get this kind of cleaned out pretty well. And a lot of what we're trying to do too, is you want to feel that we don't have any sticks, anything that's going to be, you know, when, when the saddle goes on, we want to make sure there's nothing that's going to actually push into his side and cause some, it's like getting a, a little rock in your shoe as you're going down the trail and how that'll eventually create a, 
a hot spot and a blister and we don't want that to happen to our llamas. And a lot of times when I come, I like to put my hand on him and walk really close to his backside. If I'm out too far, sometimes this here, he doesn't like it and they may wanna, some llamas may wanna kick at you. The other option, you know, some people do is we're just gonna back up all the way. We're gonna walk around, you know, not in this kicking zone and then come back over here. And then I always, again, I like to let my llama know I'm coming. Here we come, Theo. Here we come. Good boy. And then I'll start again. You can see all this dust that's in here. Sometimes these, you know, this is all but like that stick, you know, that could, you know, really push on them. So we want to make sure we get in some of that nice and clean. And again, we're coming out of winter, so they are kind of dirty, but as the season progresses and they get brushed out more often. Uh, so that's the basics to brushing out a llama and getting it ready to be saddled. Thanks for joining us here for part one of how to pack llamas. Make sure you subscribe. Part two should be out in a few weeks. Part two is gonna feature uh, saddling the llamas using Black Thunder gear and also Black Thunder gear's panniers. But until next time, we'll see you guys out on the trail. Thank you.